physical activity which involves large muscles moving in a rhythmic manner for a sustained period of time can be considered aerobic in nature, such as walking, cycling and swimming, while example activities that produce an impact or tension force on the bones and therefore promote bone growth and strength include running, jumping rope and resistance training. And of course, performing different forms of resistance training is also key for muscle strengthening. Engaging in a variety of physical activity improves muscular strength, cardiovascular health, bone health, cognitive health, mental health, sleep, body composition and much more. In 2020, the World Health Organization published updated guidelines on physical activity and sedentary behaviour, whereby they provide evidence-based recommendations concerning the amount and types of physical activity that offer significant health benefits and mitigate health risks for different population groups, including children and adolescents, adults, older adults and pregnant and postpartum women. This presentation, brought to you by Talking Sports Science, will be a summary of the recommendations. For 5 to 17 year olds, including those living with disability, it's recommended that they do at least, on average, 60 minutes per day of moderate to vigorous intensity aerobic physical activity. And for at least 3 days a week, activity should be vigorous, as well as those that strengthen muscle and bone. On a 0 to 10 scale, Relative to an individual's personal capacity, moderate intensity physical activity is usually a 5 or 6, while vigorous intensity physical activity is usually considered a 7 or 8 out of 10. And for adults, aged between 18 to 64, including those with chronic conditions and those living with disability, it is recommended they should do at least 150 to 300 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic activity, or at least 75 to 150 minutes of vigorous intensity activity throughout the week. And on at least two days a week, adults should also complete activities that strengthen all major muscle groups. For additional health benefits, more than 300 minutes of moderate aerobic exercise, or more than 150 minutes of vigorous intensity activity, or equivalent combinations, is recommended. And for older adults, including those with chronic conditions, and those living with disability, who are 65 and older, like younger adults, it is recommended that they should do at least 150 to 300 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic activity, or at least 75 to 150 minutes of vigorous intensity activity, or an equivalent combination throughout the week. And on at least two days a week, older adults should also complete activities that strengthen all major muscle groups. Also, to enhance functional capacity, as well as to help prevent falls, on at least three days a week, it is recommended that older adults engage in multi-component physical activity that combines all types of exercise, but emphasises functional balance and strength training. If older adults are not currently meeting the recommendations, doing some physical activity is better than doing none. However, they should aim to be as physically active as their function ability allows and adjust their level of effort for physical activity relative to their fitness level. And regarding pregnant and postpartum women without contraindication, it is recommended that they undertake regular physical activity throughout pregnancy and the postpartum period, as it reduces the risk of preeclampsia, gestational hypertension, gestational diabetes, excessive gestational weight gain, delivery complications and postpartum depression, while not increasing any risk of stillbirth, newborn complications or adverse effects on birth weight. For pregnant and postpartum women without contraindication, it is recommended to do at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic activity throughout the week, as well as incorporating a variety of aerobic and muscle strengthening activities, and performing gentle stretches may also be beneficial. It is important to highlight women who before pregnancy habitually engaged in vigorous intensity aerobic exercise, or who were physically active, can continue these activities during pregnancy and the postpartum period. 
Additional safety considerations for pregnant women when exercising are to avoid physical activity during excessive heat, especially with high humidity, to stay hydrated by drinking water before, during and after physical activity, to avoid activities in the supine position after the first trimester of pregnancy, to avoid activities which involve physical contact, pose a high risk of falling, or might limit oxygenation, such as activities at high altitude, and pregnant women considering athletic competition or exercising significantly above the recommended guidelines should seek supervision from a specialist healthcare provider. It is also important that a qualified healthcare provider informs pregnant women of the danger signs, alerting them as to when to stop or to limit physical activity, and if any danger signs do occur, they should contact the healthcare provider immediately. Lastly, engaging in physical activity after delivery should be a gradual process, and in consultation with a healthcare provider when a C-section has been carried out. And that concludes the physical activity recommendations for the different population groups. The key take-home points from the World Health Organization is that across the lifespan, individuals should limit their time spent being sedentary, and replace sedentary time with physical activity of any intensity to achieve health benefits, as the benefits of doing physical activity and limiting sedentary behaviour outweigh the potential harms. Because some physical activity is better than none for those individuals not currently meeting the recommendations, they should start with small amounts of physical activity and gradually increase the frequency, intensity and duration over time. However, Those living with disability may need to consult a healthcare professional or other physical activity and disability specialist to help initially determine the type and amount of activity appropriate for them. And that concludes this presentation. If you want to check out the full document regarding the World Health Organization physical activity recommendations, then the link is in the description. Thanks for listening, folks. See you next time.